Hey guys, welcome back to Cross Timbers Bison. In today's video, we're gonna dart some yearlings that I think may have some parasites. I'm gonna give you some reasons why we do this, and I'm gonna tell you a little secret about bison that may surprise you. All right, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna put my GoPro on my chest and I'm gonna show you kind of how the process of darting these animals go. And if you've got animals, you may consider the darting method because um, basically they're all relaxed, they're chill, they're coming up here, I just fed them. But like if you're out in the pasture and you don't wanna bring your animals up, this is a perfect way to get whatever it is, unless you're putting bottom B12 of them, you just see that they need a little bit of uh, life or they're just getting sick, you see the first stages and you don't wanna bring them all the way up. This is a perfect way to get a vaccination, a dewormer or a vitamin in your animals if you've had this problem. I highly recommend using a dart gun because it's gonna be stressful bringing those animals up, running them through your alley and your system and into your squeeze chute, that's more stressful. That's why we just recently did that with Dunbar. We went out and we darted him. And I had to chase him a little bit around the pasture, of course. But anyways, there's one in here that I'd really like to sell as a breed bull. And then, so that's the focus here today is I'm gonna show you how we dart them and everything that goes with the process of that. Because um, I'll tell you a little secret about bison and how the bison is so much different than a lot of animals. The 359 bulls right here in front of us, you see how he still has hair. Look at those next to him that are still, sh that are shed off completely. That one has a little bit, but it's fallen off there, that heifer. But this bull right back here is the one that we're after. So I don't want to get too close to him, but I'm going to try to shoot him on his hip. That's a safe place if they've got a lot of hair on their neck still. Like this 358 here next to me, she is completely slicked off. She's got a spot where I could get her on her neck, but the bull right behind her that keeps moving, he still has a lot of hair left. This is our target right here. All right, so what we're gonna do here is you gotta have a certain length of needle. We're gonna get us hooked up here. I'm thinking that this bull is gonna weigh probably close to about uh, maybe six to 700 pounds possibly. And so I'm gonna draw this real quick. All right, we're gonna do 700. So I've got two different CCs here. These are the only ones that go in this new dart. Here's the brand right here. Um, so you can kind of see the price here. We've got a five pack of darts here for $41. So, and the, the only bad part about these is they are one and done. So we're, we've got a, we're gonna do a seven CC here. Now I'm, I'm kind of guessing his weight a little bit. And then you have to have this thin, long needle to go in our 7cc dart. And there it is. Uh, so here's our dart. Ready. It's full. This bull is actually standing right here next to me. So, somebody told me this the other day as a good comment. It's unsafe. Somebody made a good comment, because I wasn't sure on how to, I never read the instructions on this, on how many pumps that you get. Uh, and so, one of the people who actually have one, they said, you should do, every pump should be how many ever cc's your dart is. So, we've got a seven cc dart. We're gonna pump seven times. That's three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, so here's our bull right here. You see all the hair still left on him. We're just going to shoot him right here in the butt real quick since he's right here next to me. He's right here in front of us. This is going to give us a good shot here. It is the 359 bull. You see how his hair, the 359 bull is right here in front of us. You see, I don't want to get too close to him, but I'm going to try to shoot him on his hip. That's a safe place if they've got a lot of hair on their neck still.
right, so we've got a shot on him. It's a good shot. It's where we want it, kind of in the fatty area. Of course, he doesn't like it, which I wouldn't either. It hurts for a little bit. That's going to bother him. No safety back on. So right now it's injecting in him. You can still see it there. Still hanging on. It's probably a little, it's like being bit by. <laughs> He's gonna run off a little bit down under our system, down in our alley. So it doesn't always work out this way. Um, he was just obviously up here hanging out. Notice it didn't affect the rest of them. The only thing that it's going to affect um, is that he may just scare him as he's acting out or, you know, running around crazy. He's like, oh, man, got bit by a horse fly or something, you know. Um, so it's just something that's just annoying to him because it's stuck to him right now. And so it's 7 cc. So is it? it's injecting immediately. As soon as it hits, it's injecting. So I've seen these darts stay in them for 30 minutes. I've seen it stay in them for a minute. So it, there's no telling how long it'll take. So the good thing is, is we're not out in the pasture. I'll be able to go find that dart here in this little uh, temporary pin that these uh, show animals are in. And so you can see a little bit of hanging off of her right here. But other than that, she slicked off. She's got a little bit there at shed. So most of the time, these animals are shedding their winter coat off in about June when it starts to warm up. She's got a little bit there. That bull, the 351 bull, has already shed all, all of his off. He's got a little bit around his neck, but that's pretty natural for um, a bull. 356 uh, bull here. These are two awesome bulls here that we're super excited about. They've already shed their hair off. There's one more little bull in here that still hasn't shed his hair off. He's right over here. Little 352 bull. So what that means is there's something going on inside of them. And more than likely, just referring back to what I said, more than likely a parasite load. All right, we'll go check on our bull here. He's hiding under his little shade. We'll go see how he's doing. Hey, y'all. Pretty girl. Pretty girl. All right, let's go over here and check on him and see what he's up to. All right. Well, it looks to me like the dart is out. You ladies stay. All right, so dart is out. He's jazzed up, of course. Now, we'll go out here in our little alley here. See if we can find the dart. There's 350 heifer. Okay, here's the dart right here. Okay. Now, the only bad thing about them is you can't use them again, so. You know, it's about a eight dollar dart right there at a seven cc and uh, won't be used again so here you can there's this little pad here and some of you may know more about these than me but that's kind of the injection right there and this little smooth spot stops it when it hits the skin when it penetrates this little thing slows it down and then there's a ball inside here can hear it you hear it and it slowly pushes all the way up and injects it so uh that was about five minutes that didn't take very long and it was already out so uh he's not gonna be happy with me but he'll be much better now but there's really just two of them in here that have hair the rest of them have all slicked off so what i've noticed about this bull is um we've been feeding him and stuff hay and all that you can see the uh deals here 
So, but what I've noticed about this bull that was interesting is there's the sign of he's not losing his hair. And then the second thing is you can kind of compare him to these other bulls um, and, and their weight gain and stuff like that and how they look. And if he's not gaining the weight like some of these other ones compared to him that are about the same size, then you realize that there's more than likely a parasite load because he's um, not putting on the pounds like the others are his size. But you can see here, he's back to normal. He's hanging out here next to me, looking at me. But you can see here, everything's normal back with him. He's sitting here waiting. They're all waiting on me for to give him alfalfa. I'll give him alfalfa at this time of the day. So, but uh, easy In injection. And I didn't have to round him up. I didn't have to round them all up. I just basically walked out here, loaded the start, shot him. And he lost it in five minutes and now he's back to normal. And I didn't have to get all the other ones all stirred up and rounded up either. Everybody's back to chill mode. Now, we spend a lot of time with our bison, as you can tell, and they're pretty chill. And that's why we spend time with them is for reasons like this. And so that when somebody wants to go and purchase maybe this bull that we just darted, um, they'll be used to people and they won't be bouncing off the pins and stuff. And they'll be acclimated to people in general. So that's part of the reason why... We spend time with our animals and they get used to us so that when they go to a new owner, they will fit in their system um, a lot faster just because they're presence of people. So one thing I forgot to mention in these boxes that you get here, they always come with a needle that will, that is used to pull your whatever you're doing, whatever you're drawing and actually fit in the dart. So I was just going to tell you that they actually come with the proper size needle there's the size of it right there so we're, I, there's one more bull in here i think i'm going to go ahead and dart as well and get him taken care of he looks a little bit the same he still hadn't lost all of his hair so you know i don't know how many it's like a, a dozen of them It's right here behind me. Alright, so this bull right here closest to me is also has hair. And since I'm out here and doing this, we'll go ahead and shoot him too. His number is 352. He's right here in front of me. We're gonna see how we can do here. And he's hiding from me. <laughs> so they're gonna be a little nervous now since I've already done this once. Got him. <laughs> He's gonna do the same thing. He's gonna run down the lane. And notice everybody's calm. Notice all these animals are not freaking out. They're used to me being in the pen with them. And here he is. Okay, so that one's already gone. So that was less than a minute. He's already lost it. And there it is. I see it. So there's a huge, there's a difference right there. See, I already got the dart. I can walk out here and pick it up and everybody's fine and there you go completely different story on this uh drilling bull um that was in him less than a minute 
and we picked up the dart and we're moving on so there you go the rest of them are all good to go none of them have hair on them so those two should be better so what we'll do is we'll keep track of how they're doing and we'll let you know how their body changes we'll keep looking at them and uh, we'll keep you updated with them. well here's a little secret about bison that i have talked to lots of bison pr producers about and discussed on something unique about bison compared to some other animals is you have to kind of think as a wild animal essentially and i want you to think of places like yellowstone national park that we talk about quite a bit as a bison naturally roaming on the great plains for hundreds of years these bison had to worry about predators the wolves and the bears and like animals in yellowstone like i just mentioned are facing that as well here's the difference between a bison and a lot of animals a bison if it is sick will do everything it possibly can to not show it if an animal that is privately owned and not roaming around like wild bison like yellowstone these animals can get sick they can get parasites like they can here in southern oklahoma parasite loads is one of our biggest struggles raising bison at least down here in the southern great plains and because of the parasites that's why we have to deworm them twice a year up in the north they don't have to deworm near as much because of the weather the climate and conditions are all completely different than here in southern oklahoma we're not typically dealing with some of the diseases like they do up there such as brucellosis or mycoplasmosis if you do not catch the parasite load in some of your animals in an early stage it can sometimes be too late so if you see us out in the pasture darting some of these animals individually instead of the whole herd that's because some of them have reached that point where they're finally showing that something is going on with their internal system they are sick and they are showing it so by that time as a producer i've noticed some changes in this cow over the past couple weeks it's time to dart her so what we typically do when we dart is we give them a dewormer and that's why the dart can be really handy and efficient is because only two or three may be sick or may have a parasite load compared to the entire herd. So you can bring the dart gun out here and dart them specifically. But here in about a month, we're gonna bring all these bison up and do our annual roundup and working. Doc is gonna bring a system down and they're all gonna get a dewormer. And that's where you actually get to see the dewormer going in them and you know it's going in them. These little guys right here will also get a fresh, pretty little tag with a new number on it for their identification. And the entire Big Joe herd will be let back out in the pasture once again. So one of the reasons why they hide that weakness and why they hide their sickness is so that they can avoid predation. Because the wolves and the bears sense those things first. They go for the weak and they go for the sick and the older age animals as well. As a bison, they're gonna wait as long as they can so that they can avoid predation. If you're lucky, you gotta pay attention to your bison because they can change very fast. And so it's important to catch and pay attention and catch some of those sicknesses or those weaknesses in some of your bison as they start to degress. Sometimes if you're acting too late to that digression and that sickness that's going on inside them, you may have a loss on your hands and the damage is already done. So these animals will push that as long as they can. And I think that's instilled in them. That's in their genetics and that's in their being. That's what they've done for hundreds of years. And that's another reason how they survived on the Great Plains for so long until everything got a little wild when the settlers showed up. Thank you guys for watching us. We're gonna keep on bass ranching.